Welcome to Explain, a series of health education programs published by the Patient Education Institute, the leading provider of interactive health education. This video includes general medical information and does not replace the medical advice of your doctor or healthcare provider. If you have questions pertaining to your medical condition, ask your doctor or healthcare provider. Hip Replacement Physical Therapy Introduction Hip replacement surgery is a very successful and safe operation, but long-term success mostly depends on the patient. The muscles around the hip joint must be strengthened after surgery and the patient needs to recognize the limitations of a new hip. This program reviews necessary steps that must be taken in order to get the most out of a new hip. Artificial hips Artificial hips have improved significantly over the years. Artificial hips are made of two parts. A socket anchored in the pelvis. A ball type anchor. Artificial hips function a lot like a ball and socket device. Artificial hips allow a very wide range of motion even though it is a little less than normal. The muscles of the legs keep artificial hips in place and do not allow them to slide out of place or dislocate. This is why it is important to strengthen leg muscles in the hip area after a hip replacement. It is best to strengthen all of the muscles of the legs. Leg muscles are usually weak if they have not been used for months or years due to pain. The risk of dislocating a new hip joint is the highest during the first six to eight weeks after surgery. If your surgeon has performed the surgery using a procedure called an anterior approach, the risk of dislocation is lessened. Your precautions and exercises may be different than listed in this module as well. Please discuss this with your healthcare provider. A dislocation usually happens if the operated leg is allowed to cross beyond the midline of the body, the hip is allowed to bend more than 80 or 90 degrees, the operated leg is turned or rotated inwards. To prevent a new hip from dislocating, it is a good idea to put a pillow between the legs to prevent them from getting too close together. Immediately after surgery, a large wedge called an abductor pillow will be placed between your legs. This should be used during your hospital stay to prevent dislocation from crossing the legs. It is very important not to lean forward in bed or in a chair for the first couple weeks after surgery. Using a high-rise toilet seat also helps prevent dislocation. Over time, as the muscles get stronger, preventive measures like these will not be as important. Physical Therapy With time and physical therapy, your new hip will work and feel like a normal hip, but there might be lots of pain and stiffness in the hip at first. Your orthopedic surgeon may recommend using crutches or a walker right after surgery to ease the pain. The surgeon will also let you know how much weight you can put on the operated leg. As your physical therapy progresses, you will be able to put more and more weight on the leg without feeling pain. It is your responsibility to go to physical therapy, strengthen your leg, and improve the range of motion in your new hip. Your healthcare providers will guide and help you after your surgery. Right after surgery, when the hip is still healing, it is important to ask for enough pain medication to overcome surgical pain and start the exercise program. After a while, pain usually disappears completely and exercising becomes more enjoyable. As with any physical therapy program, there are a few main guidelines to remember. The following pages show some tips to help you as you strengthen your new hip joint. Start slow and progress gradually. Set achievable goals for yourself and discuss them with your physical therapist. Examples of such goals include walking 100 yards, going up or down the stairs, taking a few trips around the block every day. Reward yourself as you achieve goals. If you reach a long-term goal, you could buy yourself a new outfit or rent a good movie. Ask family and friends for help and motivation. 
For example, someone could walk with you and keep you company. Stay in shape. Keep doing the exercises even years after your operation. Some pain may be expected. Lots of pain is not. Call your surgeon or physical therapist for advice or help at any time. Sponsored by the Patient Education Institute. www.patient-education.com Over 5,000 videos and interactive tutorials. Exercises This section will show you some exercises that will help strengthen your leg and make your hip joint more flexible. Hip extension, gluteal set. Lie down flat and squeeze your buttock muscles together without holding your breath. Hold together for 5 to 10 seconds. Repeat 15 to 20 times. Knee and hip flexion. While lying down flat, slide one heel at a time towards your body to a bent knee position. Hold for 10 to 15 seconds. Repeat 10 to 20 times. Hip abduction and adduction. While lying down with the legs straight and together, slide each leg separately out and then back in while keeping the knees straight and the toes pointed up. Hold for 1 to 2 seconds and repeat 10 to 20 times. Hip extension. Bridging. While lying down with the knees bent and feet flat, lift up on the buttock and hold it for 5 seconds. Repeat 10 to 20 times. Quadricep setting. While lying on your back, keep your legs straight, together, and flat down with your arms by your sides. Tighten the quads one leg at a time while pushing the back of your knee down. Hold for 5 seconds, then relax for 5 seconds. Repeat about 10 times for each leg. You can do several sets of this exercise a few times every hour if you can manage any pain you have. Terminal Knee Extension while lying down, place a pillow under your knees so that they are bent at a 30 or 40 degree angle. Straighten one leg at a time, hold it straight for about 5 seconds, and relax it slowly back to the initial position. Repeat 10 to 20 times as much as you can manage pain. Ankle Exercise While lying down, place a towel under the calf so that the heel is raised up. First, point the foot toward the nose and hold it for 5 to 10 seconds, then point it down and hold again for 5 to 10 seconds. Repeat 15 to 20 times. Heat and Ice Heat and ice can be used to aid with the exercises. Ice helps to decrease swelling and pain. A bag of crushed ice may be used for 10 to 20 minutes. A heating pad may be used to loosen up the muscles and increase the range of motion in the hip. It can also be used for 10 to 20 minutes. It is important to remember that your hip surgery may cause decreased sensation in the hip. Check the temperature of anything you put on your hip with your hand first. You should also look at the hip often while using heat to make sure you are not burning the skin. Do's and Don'ts this section shows what you should and should not do, especially in the first few months after your surgery. This is specific to a traditional hip replacement surgery. If you have had a surgery using an anterior approach, your precautions will be different. Please consult with your health care providers. To avoid the risk of dislocating your new hip, you should not bend the hip too far toward the chest. Allow your hip to turn inward. Allow the leg to cross over the midline. Do not bend your hip any more than a right angle. Using chairs with arms and sliding down the chair when you sit are helpful practices that keep the hip from bending too far. As you stand up from a chair, use your hands, arms, and the leg that was not operated on to push yourself up. Be careful not to bend your new hip more than 90 degrees. Do not sit on the floor, low stools, or toilet seats. This bends the hip more than 90 degrees. A high-rise toilet seat is recommended until you get stronger. Do not bend to put on your shoes, socks, or pants. You can use a reacher and wear slip-on shoes at first. 
Your home health therapist can show you how to put your socks, pants, and shoes on. You may need some help. Keep your kneecaps pointing straight or slightly outward. Turning it inward can put significant stress on your new hip. This is important while you are standing, sitting, or lying down. Do not cross the operated leg over the midline of your body. This turns the kneecap inward. Do not sit with your legs crossed at the knee. Keep pillows between your legs while you are sleeping. This prevents the operated leg from accidentally crossing the midline while you toss and turn in bed. Other activities. Walking is recommended, but it does not replace the exercises pointed out in this program or those given by your physical therapist. You should not drive until you have checked with your health care provider to make sure it would be safe. You should also check with your health care provider before having sexual intercourse after your hip surgery. If you need to have dental or surgical procedures, you should make sure to tell the health care provider about your hip replacement operation. You may need some antibiotics to prevent an infection in your artificial hip. If you like this video, please like and share. For similar videos, subscribe to our channel. Summary Hip replacement is surgery for people with severe hip damage. Artificial hips are made of two parts, a socket anchored in the pelvis, a ball-type anchor, Hip replacement surgery is a very successful and safe operation. The long-term results of this operation mostly depend on your faithful efforts toward strength and endurance. It is important to exercise the leg and the whole body regularly. It is just as important to stay fit and not become overweight. The majority of patients who have a hip replacement are able to resume most of their activities and live active and painless lives. Thank you for using Explain.